patience have her perfect work, and ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing more. Patience is a huge virtue. Um, I teach special ed, you have to have a lot of patience. I work with small kids, you have to have a lot of patience. I work with high school kids, nothing against you guys, but you have to have a lot of patience. Uh, be a coach, and work with some of these guys. I had to have a lot of patience with poor quad, broken ankles, everything else. So just be sure, keep that verse in the back of your mind. When, when things are hard and you don't know why things work out, James 1, 2 through 4 is one of my weapons that I keep. All right, so a little acrostic for the word game, uh, for game changer. G, get a purpose, get passionate, and get in the game. Why do you do what you do? Why do I coach? For the kids. I coach football. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. I teach football. I coach life. I want to make an impact in young men's lives. That's why I do it. I didn't know that when I got the job. I thought I was doing it because I want to be in the game. Oh, awesome, God. Thank you. I still get to be around football. Now I get to be around young kids. I teach football. I coach life. Why do you work? Why do you come here? Why are you a band of brothers? Find your purpose. When you find that purpose, have a passion for it. My passion is teaching. My passion is coaching. Alan's passion is men's ministry. What's your passion? His purpose has been, I just heard his small testimony in there. I had no idea. I just asked him. I didn't mean to incorporate that in this lesson, but he just told me, God's calling. I still call you to do men's ministry. Do it. He listens. He's faithful. Uh, do it for a reason. Don't do it because you don't. Don't do anything because you hate it. If you hate it, be done with it. Just get out of it. It's not. It's not. It's not purposeful. Life's too short to hate something. Have a reason for it. Have a purpose for it. If you love wrestling, you do it because you love it, right? If you hated it, would you go out there? Same for you, right? You might hate school. You have to go to school. But really, you don't hate it, hate it. You, know, you enjoy You enjoy the people you're surrounded with, your friends, your teachers, your coaches. And everything you do, you do it for the glory of God. I know you've heard that. Uh, can't be too cliche, though. Everything you do, do it for the glory of God. That's your G, your A. Always make it count. Everything you do, make it count. Who in here suffers from the case of the Mondays, either one Monday out of the year or every Monday out of the year. Don't lie to me now. You guys never suffer from the case of the Mondays. You're lying to me. Come on. <laughs> they don't have to get up on Monday. They're retired. They don't, don't, they don't, they don't, they don't have, have to get up. Submission all day. Submission does right now. Yeah. Uh, well, one time you did. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't want to go to practice every day. We had a bye week on C-Team this week. Why in the world did we practice? It was the worst week of practice ever. And the kids knew it because what do you practice for? Game. A game. I don't go to work for free. Yes, I could. I want to. <laughs> they went to work this week for free. It's terrible. When that happens, you got to dig within and make it count. Make everything worth it. Make every rep count. I'm not going to be perfect I'm not going to be a great football player if I don't practice. I'm not going to be good at my job if I don't practice my teaching. You're not going to be a good band of brothers if you don't practice in here with me speaking so that you can go out and minister to others and bring other brothers in. Um, and just know that you can't do it alone. Everything you do, God's with you. You can't be done alone. I dare you to try it. See how far you get. Try it by yourself. Try it with you. Let me know how it works out. I'll go ahead and tell you. That's G-A-M. Make a play. God chose us to be game changers. He called my number to score. He called your number to score. He called you to get that last reversal for the win. He called you for the pin. He called Allen to shoot the three. Be a game changer. Be the one. Be a ball hawk. Want the ball. Come on, God. Give me the ball. Give me the rock. Give me the peel. I'm wide open. Give it to me. Be that guy. Don't stand back now. I know the 
be a leader. I, I know you got to be a follower before you're a leader. But it takes a good leader that wants to follow. So learn, young men, learn from these older leaders so that you become that guy. Uh, and when you are when you are a ball hog, it causes full surrender, full faith. Alan took, took a lot of faith and surrender for Alan to move from his home church here, right, to the other one. He stayed there for seven years. He was probably comfortable, complacent, had it all going on. It's all right. He wakes up one morning. Alan needs to move back. Full faith and full surrender again. All these friends for seven years. And they're still friends, but you know he's with you guys now. So be, be faithful in that sense. Let God's will be done. Surrender God every day and let His will be done. Uh, and E, G A M E. An everyday investment. It's probably the biggest one here. You have to make an everyday investment to be good. Everyday investment to be great. Everyday investment in the Word, in your band of brothers, to your wife, to your kids, to everyone. If you don't practice, you can't be good. When you invest, put your time and effort in for what? To gain a profit. I coach so the young men can live a full life to love the Lord prison like some of my athletes' fathers are, to not run out when they get their wife pregnant, to be in that their son or daughter's life, to be there, to invest, invest their life in someone else. Uh, so where, my question to you is, where are you investing your time? Where are you spending your time? When you wake up in the morning, you get out of bed. I really don't want to go to work today. I just want to shower. It's just going to be, I'm going to take today off. When you hop out of bed, shoot your feet. Dear God, let me hit the devil in the mouth today. How are you with that? Where's your life stand with that? Are you in the Word? Are you surrounding yourself with good people? God says, Greater is he who is in us than he who is, who is in this world. The realest statement I've ever heard. Greater is he who is within us than he who is within the world. Invest yourself in the Lord and you will prosper. It's not about us. It's way bigger than us. And as a game changer, you don't do things. I'm not up here speaking to you guys because I want your approval. I'm not up here so Al can go back and tell my mom, Trey did a pretty good job. You got a good son. <coughs> it's not about others' approval. Real game changers do things and invest in others because they already know they have God's approval there. You already have God's approval. You have God's love. Do it for God. Don't do it for society. Don't do it for others. Don't be the one that scores and showboats. You think Tim Tebow doesn't have God's approval? I think Tim Tebow doesn't want to play NFL football right now, but he can't because all the media, all the, the quote-unquote negative attention. But then you have guys in the NBA that come out and say they're gay, and people tweet them and Facebook them or whatever and say, I support you. That is awesome. I'm so glad you did that. But when Tim Tebow writes John 3.16 under his eye at Florida, he's condemned for it. real fast for my brother. He, I wish my brother could have been here. He had a, he's a first year teacher. He just graduated from PC. He played football there. He's coaching at Ferns with me. Had a teacher's class today. Uh, I'd love to do a little dynamic duo thing with him. And I, he doesn't know I'm going to say this. Uh, and I'll tell him. You guys know you can tell him too. 